It may look like something dreamed up by Enid Blyton, but the Gamine is no noddy car despite its comical appearance. This rear engine two-seater was based on the same platform as the Fiat 500, but it wasn't built by Fiat. Instead it was built independently by Italian coach builder Vignali, which is why its official name is a Vignali Gamine. To justify its high price, Vignali used Fiat's sportiest 500 engine, the stonkingly powerful 21 horsepower two-cylinder air-cooled unit from the 500 Sport. That was enough to take the Gamine all the way to 60 miles an hour, which was plenty for Noddy and Big Ears to get away from PC Plod. So this particular Gamine is owned by Jane Weitzman, um, a collector of weird cars, um, or, or should I say weird collector of cars? Which, which, oh, which way is it? Probably both works. Yeah, I think, yes. I think, I think <laughs> either cap will fit. Um, how long since you bought your Gamine? This one must be 20 years or more. Um, this was actually bought by my late husband Henry. Right. Um, he fancied one and uh, came across this which had been in a museum um, and just thought yes definitely. Um, so this wasn't below his radar particularly, he knew, <laughs> he knew it existed. He knew it existed, uh, just he knew he wanted, uh, uh, yes. And, and did the opportunity present itself or did he go out looking for one? I think he actually went out looking for it, he, he used to do more of that, when I've bought cars they've tended to find me but um, he tended to go out and think yeah I fancy one of those, um, so I think that's where, what and he did. I, I, they seem to come up very rarely, how hard was it to find something? I have to be so honest and say I don't really know. Yeah. Um, I do know it came, the, the roof, bits were missing and the roof was sort of pretty much manky and we thought we'd reinstate it. Um, but we looked into it and to be honest there were quite a lot of the framework was missing as well so we decided, well she's always been garaged so forget the roof, we've yeah, got the Yeah you probably won't do too many transcontinental trips no. in this one. And then what we did was instead we, we re did the steering wheel in red leather because we thought it looked cute and the steering wheel was very scruffy. So. And did you buy it with this colour scheme? Yes, we bought it with this colour scheme. But it's scheme. not an original colour scheme, is it? No, it's not an original colour scheme. It would have come out of the factory either red or yellow, but not a combination of the two. But, I mean, it is such a, an iconic sort of shape of, of Noddy's car, isn't it? You yeah, know, I yeah. mean, it, it, it doesn't look ridiculous at all. No, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, absolutely no, not. I'm sorry. It no. no, it's you know, it it just cried out to be painted in noddy colours. And really. presumably, it's just used for local trips. You wouldn't go very far. Well, I mean, how usable is it? Go, oh, it is usable. It's perfectly usable. Yes, I, I've driven it. You know, to quite a few shows. Um, but all you wouldn't, in the UK. You wouldn't, I wouldn't, you, go, yeah, you on wouldn't a, go on a continental a trip. continental tour on yeah. her. No, I don't think so. So you've got um, the because the she back. does get a hell of a wobble on the t sort of 40 odd. Ah, you can okay. be driving along and you're fine and then suddenly, I think it's that toe in at the back, <laughs> she'll suddenly go wobble and you, you're out of control completely. You just have to sort of pull over to the side, let her get herself back and then you set off again and it's fine. <laughs> and is it just like a Fiat 500 to drive? Yes. Yes, it is. But windier. Although, actually, uh, it depends. You've got the sunroof open on an original 500. That's pretty windy, too. Yes, a little bit. Probably yeah. not as windy as this. Yeah. But it's, I mean, after all, it's a summer car, really. Yes. Um, you, you wouldn't really want to use it all year round. Although, you could, because it's all, you know, vinyl seats and things. So, it doesn't matter if it gets wet. Yeah. But, um, but there's no there's weather no protection at all with this particular one. No, with this particular and one. And even the original, no even when it has weather protection, it's pretty rudimentary. Isn't it's it? a fairly rudimentary roof. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I mean you still haven't got windows at the side. You know, you've got. There's no side screens. We've got no side screens. No. Right. I don't know if it ever came with them. I'm not sure. And did you buy it like this, give or take? It's had no restoration. We have in your done. Hands. I think the only thing I did is the engine cover panel here had had gone a bit manky, so I just had that resprayed. But no, absolutely nothing done to her otherwise, exactly as she came to us. Say apart from the steering wheel cover. <laughs> Very gorgeous red. <laughs> um, and and what, what do you like about the gamine? It makes people smile. I had somebody visit um, last year, and. He was the whole car collection, you know, but this, oh, he said, could I sit in it? Yes, of course <laughs> you can. Oh, oh, he said, you've made my year. 
you know, because it just brings a huge joy to people's lives. I mean, I've driven this around in sort of London and you see people on their bikes trying to cycle and take a picture at the same time and you think you're going to fall off in front of me in a minute. You know? Well, I've never seen another one uh, outside the show environment. You know, I've never seen one on no. the road. No. And this is, this is the kind of car we need to see on our roads. It, it's, it's, it does bring joy. It really does. I, d I just had some sort of a little bit of work done to her and I'd um, pulled into a petrol station and I think the points must have closed so she wouldn't restart and I'm sitting there waiting for rescue and this uh, black BMW or blacked out windows pulls up four big guys get out all chained and everything else and you think Ooh. <laughs> They were so sweet. They were all mechanics. <laughs> right. they, they'd seen this parked and stopped and they thought, oh, we can help. <laughs> so did they get it running again? Well, as it happens, the RAC guy turned up at the same time. Right. And, and um, yes, he just tweaked the points and she was fine, got her running and went, went home. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never forget it, you know, just they were absolutely entranced. You know? <laughs> Vignali was founded in 1948 by Alfredo Vignali, who started out by building a custom body for Fiat's original 500, the Topolino. Over the coming years, his company rebodied numerous Maseratis, Alfa Romeos, Fiat's Lancias and Ferraris, but towards the end of the 1960s, it started to build Fiat-based cars in significantly bigger numbers than before. These included the 124-based Eveline, the 125-based Samantha, shown here, and the 500-based Gamine. By 1969, Vignali had sold his coach-building company to Di Tommaso, but just a few days after signing the agreement, he was killed in a car crash. Ford would then swallow up Di Tommaso and Vignali with it in 1973, and while the brand was mothballed soon after, just like Ghia, Vignali was revived more recently to sit at the top of Ford's various model ranges. The Vignali-bodied Fiat Gamine was introduced in 1967, and two years later, London-based Greek Cypriot entrepreneur Phryxos Dimitriou started to import these quirky two-seater roasters into the UK. Dimitriou was well known in London's Bayswater for running casinos and an array of allied enterprises, along with a car spares business, some property and a couple of garages. With these businesses already established, Dimitriou decided to branch out in 1968 by importing cars from Europe. The whole thing happened quite by chance, when Dimitriou's flight from Milan to Athens was held up. With time on his hands, Dimitriou found himself studying a Fiat Gamine in the airport car park, and he was rather taken by it, to the point that he decided to stop off in Turin on his way back from Athens to see about becoming the UK importer for the Gamine. There was a small hurdle, however. Dimitriou wanted to sell the rebodied Fiat in right-hand drive form in the UK, and Vignali refused to play along. So to prove that he was serious, he ordered 200 cars there and then, along with all right-hand drive production for the following six months. Vignali capitulated and Dimitriou got his right-hand drive cars. The Gamine made its UK debut in October 1968 at the Earls Court Motor Show. Thanks to plenty of coverage in the national newspapers, several hundred orders flowed in, almost exclusively from women, to whom the car had been pitched in the news coverage, using the slogan, You'll be mad about motoring and you're glad about Gamine. Well, it was the 60s. Of the 2,000 or so Gamines built, around 800 were sold by Dimitriou, but only about 200 of those were in the UK. The rest found buyers in other right-hand drive markets. Such high sales volumes seem incredible now, given the Gamine's lack of usability, and as with all coach-built cars, the price of opting for such individuality was high. £698 to be precise, which was £251 more than the Fiat 500 on which it was based. Dimitriou's car import venture had been spurred on by fears that forthcoming legislation changes might lead to him losing his gaming licence for his casinos, but when those fears proved unfounded, he realised that he didn't need the car business after all. Besides, in 1970, he decided to return to Cyprus, where almost immediately he met an untimely end in the backseat of a Vignali-bodied Fiat. Dimitriou was travelling in the Fiat when a runaway army tank ran over his car, squashing both him and his car flat. Crash protection never was the forte of these cars. 